guys. Welcome to today's video. It's going to be a little bit different and kind of probably pretty long, but I'm talking about an incredibly important subject. No matter if you're postmenopausal, perimenopausal, or just uh, not menopausal at all, sleep is incredibly important to your brain health, your emotional health, your physical health, and let's pull it all back to your beauty. A couple of months ago, Sanjay Gupta came out with a book about brain health. And one of the things that he emphasized in this book is the incredible, detrimental importance of seven to eight hours of sleep a night. This is something that we all know, but there's also this counterculture of people like Martha Stewart who say, oh, I only need four hours of sleep a night. So I spent years and years and years sleeping five or six hours a night. However, I needed a nap. I was exhausted. Yes, I could forge through it. I could wake up and force myself out of bed and be groggy for an hour or two. And then by four o'clock, I had to lay down for a nap. And then I had plenty of focus and energy and I couldn't go to sleep until way past midnight. And then I'd start the whole thing again. It was a vicious cycle and it wasn't serving me. And when I saw this in the books, I thought, you know what, I'm going to make an effort to sleep seven or eight hours every night. For the first four or five days, maybe the first week, it was a little difficult for me. When I woke up, my body felt achy, like I had a flu. And I remember in years past when I had slept a lot, like eight hours, I felt that way. And I thought, my body's just not meant to sleep that many hours. I would wake up at my usual time, 5.30, 6, 6.30, and I'd say, nope, go back to sleep. And after a couple of days, I noticed that, I, I still do oftentimes, but not always wake up a little early and make myself go back to sleep. But I don't feel groggy anymore when I wake up. When I wake up, I'm awake. So while I'm now getting seven to eight hours of sleep, I still have a problem falling asleep. And that problem can be really, really debilitating. It's not uncommon for me to go to bed at midnight and I'm still lying there at 1.30 in the morning. So in the past several weeks, I decided to pick up some books that I actually already own and make an effort to ease myself into sleep. I've actually been thinking about doing a video about sleep for a couple of months. And when Lily Silk got in touch with me recently, it all clicked. I thought, okay, now I know what direction I'm going to go in. Is it seven, eight hours of sleep versus how to fall asleep? And I decided to focus on how to fall asleep. I'm going to break this video up into a couple of segments. How to cue your body setting the scene for sleep, timing the right time to go to sleep. Now, as I said, Lily Silk got in touch with me. I just want to say that this is not sponsored. I do have a link below. I always have a link for 10% off at Lily Silk, but I do not get a commission off of that, and I'm not being paid to produce this video. I just wanted to be very, very clear. However, they did send me this beautiful two-piece pajama set. It's long-sleeved with piping and a gorgeous... I chose the color. <laughs> uh, I love this kind of minky, gray, taupey color. There's even a little bit of a purple shift in here. Lovely. Thank you so much, Lily Silk. Let's talk about pajamas. The circadian rhythm is a natural internal process that regulates the sleep-waking hours on a 24-hour cycle. The cycle adjusts to local environments via external cues like light and temperature. This is really key. I believe that you can also adjust your cycle with habits, behaviors, routines. And I think we've been doing it since we were kids. Think about it. When you were a kid, chances are, when you were a young child, you took a bath before bed, you put on your pajamas before bed, and you brushed your teeth before bed. It's a ritual that lets your body know time to go to sleep. In the past 15 years ago, what is acceptable to wear in public has changed a lot. It's become very, very casual. I know that I have seen men at the grocery store in their pajama bottoms, and they were shameless about it. 
I think that we as a culture have become so used to being extraordinarily comfortable all the time that it's not all that unusual to wear something that is pajama or pajama-like as leisure clothes, something very close to pajamas, and we wear them all day, and then we turn out the light and we go to bed in them. And what we're missing by doing this kind of thing is that cue. Oh, time to shed the day, take off our clothes and put on something that is signaling to our body it's getting close to bedtime. And by the way, I like to put on my pajamas a couple of hours before bedtime. And I like the idea of having my cues come in in waves, but some of them you can group together. One of the things I think we're missing when we behave like this is shedding the day, as I said. But I'm also missing the time to have a ritual for myself that feels like self-care, that feels like an affirmation that I'm special. And it's incredibly luxurious to have a pair of silk pajamas, or maybe two, or three. I, I mean, in my fantasy world, I, I would like to have seven, but I don't. Putting on something like silk pajamas is, it, like I said, it makes me feel special. And it's not something you show the world. It's not like you're walking around with a $4,000 purse. It's something that is private. It's in your home. Someone else may see it, someone else may not see it, depending if you live alone or not. But there's something incredibly civilized, orderly, CQs, and luxurious about putting on your pajamas, whether they're silk or not. But when they're silk, it makes it so, so special. Lily Silk has an incredible selection of sleepwear for you to look at. I was so amazed, and as I said, there's a couple more sets that I would love to own. Most of the nightgowns are in silk weight of 22 Momi. I think it's called Momi or Mommy. It's all mulberry silk, and a lot of it is the Charmeuse. This is the Charmeuse silk, which has a nice shine, and that's what we typically think of when we think of silk. So in this kind of setup, the Charmeuse in 22 Momi, they have long sleeve, like mine, with long pants. They have long sleeve with shorts. And look at this chartreuse color. I love this. So pretty. In fact, I definitely, I would wear this with a pair of jeans out, but that's kind of not the point. They have a stretchy silk, which is a silk blend. So you have a little bit of give while you're sleeping, which I think is a great idea. And here is a t-shirt. It's just an oversized kind of t-shirt, but it's silk, and it's a knit silk. It's just, I'm sorry, it's just luxury. But if you like something simple to go to bed in, this might be it. If you like something a little bit more, they have this beautiful chemise with lace, which is stunning. They have a long nightgown with a little bit of lace on the side. They have this beautiful, beautiful set robe and nightgown, and I just love this. I love the color, I love the length, I love the cut. It's just stunning. And they have this beautiful 18 Momi in a crepe de shine. And this is the kind that doesn't have a shine like this. It's the inside, I think, of silk. So it feels silk. It feels like what I used to think of as raw silk. It is so elegant in its simplicity, understated. I adore this one as well. So you can see there are plenty of beautiful pajamas to choose from, from Lily Silk. And I think it might be something you want to do. Just get one set and it makes a great gift. And by the way, I've noticed that Silk has this interesting thing about it where if you're cool, it helps to keep you warm. It helps to keep your body heat next to you. But if you're warm, it breathes. So it's good for the summer and for the winter. Wearing silk pajamas at night makes me feel special, makes me feel glamorous. It's almost as good as therapy. And it makes the routine of preparing to bed something to look forward to. Mm, I can't wait to put on my jammies tonight. And if something can do that for you, I say drop the joggers and get yourself a pair of silk. So that is cue number one. Get a nice pair of pajamas that make you feel special and change into them. Cue number two, 
skincare. I'm a firm believer in doing your skincare as early as you can. If you know you're not going out and the sun has come down, wash your face and put on your skincare. I fail at this a lot because I'm oftentimes editing or I'm finishing up things at night like doing my description box and I tend to don't want to stop and take a break when I'm near the end of something. So for me, it might be 9 o'clock, no later than 10 o'clock. But that still gives me two to three hours to have everything on my skin sinking in. And that's especially important if you are a side sleeper. And I turn around on both sides. So I'll wake up in the morning and I'll feel my stuff on my forehead, but nowhere over here. So if I can give my skin four hours, five hours, three hours, whatever, to absorb the good things, the actives I'm putting on before I go to bed, it's good for my skin, and it's also good to cue my body. Oh, we're cleaning everything off. We're going to bed soon. Bathing is the same thing. I prefer baths to showers, and I love Epsom salts that have chamomile scent in it. It's very, very relaxing. But what's great about bathing for me is I carry a lot of tension in my body, and those Epsom salts will actually help to relax your muscles. It's very important. I didn't learn this until a couple of years ago. When you get out of the tub, don't dry off with a towel. You have to let the Epsom salts dry on your skin, is what I've heard. It also keeps your skin super, super soft. And it cues your body again. I'm taking off the day, I'm trying to relax my body, and you have complete silence. There's no TV, there's no computer. Don't bring your phone in there. Give yourself 10 minutes. You don't have to light a candle, have a glass of wine, put on some music. It's not that much, do you know what I mean? The idea is to bring it into your program every day. A warm bath before bed, and again, I prefer it to be a couple of hours before bed. Whether you do it a couple of hours or just before bed, sorry, there's some kind of compressor next door, make sure that bath isn't too hot. Your body, like I said, has its own cycle and it knows sleep is coming. And during the evening hours, your body temperature starts to go down. It's our job to identify these rhythms and kind of work with them. It's like surfing, you know? You search for a wave, a cue, a rhythm, you hop on it, and you take it to the end. Don't fight against what's going on, but learn to recognize it and work with it. A hot bath is not going to do it, but a warm bath will. Now we've already established that light is very important for your rhythm. Here's something that you can do in your house, and I started doing it about two weeks ago, and I really noticed a big difference. I usually only have a couple of lamps on in the living room once it's dark, but now I turn everything on. Everything goes on when the sun goes down, and a few hours before I go to sleep, I start turning them off, and I'll put things on dimmers. And this kind of cues your body again. Okay, it's time to relax. It's time to slow down. It's time to get ready to go to sleep. And another thing I absolutely 100% do, and I cannot tell you what a difference it makes, I turn off that TV a half an hour before I go to bed. I don't turn it off on my way to the bedroom. Television is incredibly stimulating. So is watching videos. It's stimulating your eyes and your ears. So I turn it off and just the absence of that sound, it just, oh, I relax immediately. What you do with that half hour is completely up to you. Don't be too active. I wouldn't start cleaning or dusting. You might take your bath in this period of time. You might read for a few minutes. You might meditate, which I really enjoy doing. You might use your red light at this time. I like to take this time to just clean up a little bit my papers and everything I have going on so it's not too much to look at. And I do some stretching. Again, I mentioned that my body holds a lot of tension. And I've noticed when I'm in bed, just dying for sleep to come to me, that I'm quite tense. And you can't lay in bed and shiver because you're cold or hold your muscles because you haven't stretched anything out and fall asleep. It's just working against what's supposed to 
happen. So I do some stretching that is not about getting something deep, holding something for a long time. It's very fluid kind of stretching, just moving everything around. That's not exactly what I do, but I do it for about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. I might do a couple of twists and I feel so much better. So the TV sound went away. I've gotten rid of my stress from doing a little bit of stretching and I'm getting closer and closer to being perfectly primed to go to sleep. Timing the best time to go to sleep. This is really, really interesting. We all know that our sleep cycle is 90 minutes long and we have light sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep. But research shows that we experience these same cycles in our wakeful hours. Of course, we're not sleeping. In other words, we have high energy and low energy in 90 minute cycles all day long. And it's very easy to assess where you are in that cycle. You can do this for a week, for a day. I do neither. I just do this in the evening go online and look for a Necker Cube, which I will cut away to right here. Necker Cube is an optical illusion. If you stare at this and start to count 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, until it changes direction and make a notation of how many seconds and do it 15 minutes again and do it 15 minutes later again and you do that all day long and make notations. For me, I'll just do it at night, and I realize that when I'm at my lowest, it only takes two seconds for it to change over. When I'm at my highest, it might be seven seconds or 10 seconds. If I'm reading seven seconds or 10 seconds, I know not to go to bed. It happened to me last night. It was midnight, it was seven seconds, and I know if I go to bed at the top of my cycle, I'm just going to lay there being frustrated. But that also means you're not going to pay too much attention to your clock. You're really paying attention to your body clock. And sometimes I'll go to bed earlier than I normally would because I'm at the bottom of the cycle. I really believe in this, you guys, because there have been so many times I've gone to bed seriously at midnight and I'm still up at 1.30 and then I can fall asleep. So pay attention to your 90 minute cycle during the day and night during the day, I think it can help you because if you're at the low cycle and it's totally inappropriate for you to go to sleep on your desk, I think it's a good idea to turn the brain off because the brain is what's really tired and turn the body on for 10 minutes. Walk up a couple of flights of stairs, go outside, walk around the block, or just walk around the office, just move your body. Don't eat, don't do coffee, <laughs> even though that's what your body wants. Just waking it up with a little bit of oxygen will help you get through the day with better focus. And the last category is setting the stage. My entire life, I just instinctually knew I didn't want my room full of clutter. I'm not looking for a room that's austere. I don't want it to look like a hotel, but I want it to be pleasing and non-stress inducing. <laughs> inducing. To me, when I see a mess, it's like, ooh. I'm a Virgo, which isn't, I don't want to give you the impression that my place is spotless. It is not. Every single room has some mess in it that I could be cleaning up. I have makeup coming in all the time and I have boxes that I'm keeping in case I want to return things and mail coming in and I have, you know, dental stuff or this stuff going on. It's, you know, little piles of things here and there, but my bedroom does not. I keep it very simple, but I keep it happy. I think it's important to walk into a room that makes you smile, that makes you feel good. And my bedrooms have always, always done that. It's my paint colors, it's my sheets, which I love, they make me happy, my bedding, the rugs that I have, everything about that room. I love waking up in that room and I love walking in that room at night. If your bedroom makes you stressed out, you're going to have a hard time falling asleep. So think about what changes you might want to make. Changing your sheets, changing your bedding, painting your walls to help make it feel more comfortable, to make it feel like a pleasure, and make sure not to have a lot of clutter. The bed is not a place to do your work. 
Another thing I like to do to prepare my room in the cooler months is turn on the heat about two hours before I go to sleep. And then I turn it off when it's time to go to sleep. Just as our body temperature goes down as we prepare for sleep, it goes up as we prepare to wake up around four o'clock in the morning. My body temperature starts to rise and if the heat's kicking in as well, I become hot and I have to wake up to adjust the sheets. Maybe I'll throw off the duvet, I'll throw off my socks. If I just warm up the room and have a nice duvet that keeps me warm, I can turn off the heat at night. The idea is don't get overheated and don't fight against your natural body cycle to get cool in the evening and to start to warm up around four o'clock in the morning. And this is one that I'm going to probably get a lot of hate on you guys, but I'm telling you it makes such a difference. I never have a TV in my bedroom. A TV in the bedroom is just not necessary. A bedroom is for sleep. A bedroom is for sex. The bedroom is not for work. It's not to have your computer, you shouldn't be on your phone, and you shouldn't have your television in there. These are things that interrupt your natural ability to relax and get into a good sleep state. Now I've said I've never had a television in my room, but I have traveled for work for, you know, long periods of time, like three months, five months, and I've stayed in apartments, I've stayed in hotels that have televisions in the bedroom. And I, I find it incredibly depressing. I'll put on the TV and I'll fall asleep and I'll wake up and the TV is still on. It puts me in such a bad headspace, but 100% disrupts your sleep. It disrupts your quality sleep. And there goes the guys again. So I think this is a good time to wrap it up. I, I do have a couple of more things, but I know this is going to be a long one. So there you have it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope some of these ideas you'll try to incorporate into your pre-sleeping habits, your cues for your body, and I'd love to hear from you. Let me know if any of them have worked. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope it was helpful. I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe, be smart. I'm wishing you good health, and I'm wishing you good sleep.